Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on the Saturday Night Live stream, live from Michigan, where you can throw out questions and I'll do my best to get them answered. We'll talk about Bitcoin, we'll talk about the news, we'll talk about altcoins. I'm going to move some crypto around for you guys tonight. Uh, I've been a bit uh, lax in that area lately, so uh, I had uh, an inspiration for like moving uh, uh, some Bitcoin all over the place from like one place to another and like several wallets. We'll see how far we can get with that. That'll be fun. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of the breaking news tonight. So I want to thank everybody for being here once again. Uh, I'm here with the rig and my whole setup. And uh, we went uh, down to the library today. Uh, the downtown Grand Rapids library was having a book sale. So there was like books everywhere and people everywhere. And then we went to a nice little burger joint uh something about coney last stand coney uh they've got great burgers and great uh coney dogs uh nice little place downtown small place but uh really good food uh just wanted to throw some stuff out for you guys um i'm uh recommending this book for anyone that doesn't know what bitcoin is and has just heard about it i know a lot of people here are uh, looking to invest in bitcoin but if you really are curious what bitcoin is this is a great book by andreas andonopoulos i think i've got a link to it uh i'll put a link to it up in a bit uh here's another great one the same author uh mastering ethereum i believe that's uh andreas antonopoulos and dr gavin wood uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, if you don't know, uh, is the founder uh, of co-founder, CEO of Polkadot. 
So, and Dr. Gavin Wood also worked on the Ethereum project. So very prestigious authors, if you're interested. These are kind of programming books, but they're also just great explanations of what Bitcoin and Ethereum are and blockchain, all that good stuff. And then also this book here, Mastering Monero. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I got this. I think I had to order it from the Monero website. Uh, this is also a great book, talks about exactly uh, what the Monero blockchain is and how it works. Uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff, and I am, I highly recommend those books. Uh, I'm sure you can find them with a quick Google search. Uh, but let's go over to the big screen and welcome everybody that's here. Uh, I hope you all, uh, everyone can hear me. <laughs> uh, let's see, here we go. There we go. I'm going to use my stream deck. Uh, Randy was here a couple weeks ago and we were uh, talking about uh, my stream deck because he saw it over there and he was like, what is that thing? And uh, it's this little uh, deck over here where I can press buttons to change the scenes. Like I can hit this button and go back to this scene, right? And I'm always like using my mouse to do it because it's just my habit. Uh, so anyway, I dropped some videos this week. Uh, I talked about doing a privacy uh, and anonymity and security uh, sub channel. I haven't really gotten to that, but I've kind of got the bug and been doing a lot of um, uh, privacy oriented videos. Tails is a great operating system. Uh, and of course, I, you know, I'm churning out my wallet videos as fast as I can. I did one on the new Tangem that has a backup phrase. Uh, I uh, did the Keystone 3 Pro, which has just debuted. I think you can pre-order it. Maybe you can get it right now. Uh, here's my how to browse the dark web. Uh, kind of funny when I asked uh, ChatGTP to help me with the description, they were like, are you sure? You know, I was like, dude, don't tell me what to do. Just help me, uh, you know, uh, write the description for this video. Uh, but yeah, privacy and anonymity are, are not a crime. <laughs> and let's see, we got the discount code for the Engrave, which is in the description. Uh, I did a Trezor One video not too long ago. Uh, One Key is a great uh, co company. So uh, check out my channel if you're interested in technical breakdowns, how to's. Uh, I know a lot of you are into investing, but if you're into investing into Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, you should know how to keep it in your own wallet. And that's why I'm here. Uh, it's very important not only to know how to uh, set up a wallet and put your crypto in the wallet, but you also have to be adept and comfortable with moving your crypto in and out of your wallet uh, in case you need to sell. Uh, so if you're an investor and you buy Bitcoin, store it in your wallet, price of Bitcoin goes up, you need to know how to get it back over somewhere where you can sell it, right? You can't just snap your fingers and sell your Bitcoin directly out of your wallet. Well, some wallets have some software uh, and some third party uh, back ends that you can use, but it's, uh, it's a little complicated and that's why I'm here. So if you've never been in the live stream before, uh, I think I'm a little bit uh, lax in some of these links here. Oh yeah, I am. Look at me. Uh, let's see, let's put this link in here and I think we'll be sort of caught up with our work. <laughs> I like to link all the news stories down below for you guys. So uh, here's the news stories. There were a lot of news stories. Ken sent, Kenny sent me a lot of stories. Uh, I didn't get them all linked. Uh, but here's a description of what we're going to talk about. Uh, here's some links here uh, for your pre-order for the new Trezor Safe wallet, their, their latest wallet. And that discount code for the Engrave combo is still good. Uh, until November 10th. So I've got a link to that there. Uh, I've got a link to my Amazon page where you can buy computer rig equipment, which I think is really cool, and a link to uh, my crypto dad store in general. I put a new section up on flash drives because I was doing tails uh, and you boot from a flash drive with tails and uh, you need a good flash drive. I have so many flash drives laying around. Uh, let's see, and you can get a hold of me here and uh, through Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram. And I also have my email down here. If you want to get uh, a session with me, email me. Tell me what, the, what you need, what your problem is. Uh, maybe it's just questions. Maybe you're stuck. Whatever it is, uh, we'll talk. Maybe I can solve it just through email. I've done that. Uh, or maybe we can set up a Zoom session um, or something like that. Uh, 
and just shoot me an email. Uh, and you don't have to really want to pay me if you want to shoot me an email either. Um, if you just want to ask me a question, feel free to shoot me an email. I will, I will answer your email. But uh, I do, I, kn I know there are some people that want to one on one with me. So, you know, that would be a consulting session. Uh, that's the link for that. And I didn't quite get this link done about the uh, mastering Bitcoin. Uh, let's see. It should be in Amazon. Here, here it is. And I'll just uh, drop a link to this book down in the, uh, you know, that thing down here. <laughs> Paste that in there. All right. That's just a straight Amazon link. That's not uh, an affiliate link or anything. It's just a link. You know, buy that book. It's good. Uh, and the news stories, um, more stuff. Uh, I've got a lot of affiliate links. I just want to put that out there. Um, I get a lot of offers from um, I get a lot of offers from exchanges, uh, trading bots and traders and stuff. I don't really want to promote. Uh, you know, be that guy that's like, hey, use Coinbase or use, you know, Hotbot, you know, to buy, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I advocate, uh, I'm educational oriented, right? And I do a lot of videos on hardware wallets, but I don't promote a single wallet. Uh, I promote wallets in general. And for every uh, wallet that I do a review of, I'll usually get an affiliate link so that if somebody wants to buy that wallet, uh, I can get a small commission for that. So that's my thing. I don't want people to think like I'm this shill, you know, and I shill Ledger or I shill Trezor. Uh, I'm equally happy uh, to tell you about every wallet out there, and I'm equally happy to tell you what I think is wrong with every wallet out there um, and give you the pros and the cons. So I just want you guys to realize that I am, uh, I try to be an objective advocate for you uh, to hodl your Bitcoin. All right. So let's jump into the news, guys. Once again, I forgot to thank everybody. Uh, Kenny is here early. Dan was here early. Andreas or Andy, 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 Andy. How's that? How does Don not? I, I looked for a video of Don not saying Andy, 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 but I, I couldn't find it. I, I was so disappointed. Uh, of course, we had, uh, you know, uh, Barney Fife saying uh, uh, in the bud, nip it in the bud. He used to say that quite a bit. Uh, Barney Fife saying, but I could not find Barney Fife saying Andy, 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 uh, but let, I'll try. Andy, Andy, Andy. <laughs> it's about the best Don Knotts I can do. Um, one of the best, right? Uh, let's see. Marco, PT, Treb3, Mr. Miski, Think Blue, Simon. Yay. A few green candles on the chart this evening. Yes, indeed. Uh, Chris is here. Thank you for being here. Nemo Hose 323 underscore ETH. I think you've been here before. Amsterdam Holland brought the popcorn. Uh, Frank Rodriguez, E. Poston, uh, P. Whistle, Paul, thank you for being here. Good to see you here. Asil, thank you for being here tonight. And Annie Truck and Barbara K. It's good to have Barbara K. here. Scott will probably drop in. I uh, haven't. I don't see him yet. Uh, the Trezor's three Trezor Safe three doesn't impress me. It's not, uh, you know, their latest and greatest wallet. It, it is an improvement over the Trezor one, um, and it's kind of that in the middle price point. That's a, a, maybe a little disappointing. I, I kind of feel the same as you about that. Uh, we're talking, of course, about the new Trezor three. Um, where to go? Um, but I was, th the same thing happened with Ledger, you know, uh, Ledger, uh, came out with the, uh, Ledger Nano S plus. And I was like, why are you coming out with like a, um, uh, you know, a in the middle wallet? Well, I think as far as business sense goes, it makes sense, uh, cost wise to offer something in the middle for people that uh, don't have a lot of money and are trying to get a decent wallet. So we have the Trezor Safe 3. Uh, and of course, not long after Trezor came out with their uh, Ledger Nano S Plus, 
uh, they did uh, also come out with their uh, stacks, which still has not hit the market, and I don't know when it's going to be here. Uh, they're not. I'm not in with them as far as that goes, so I have no idea when the thing is coming out. Uh, they they did sort of come to us on bended knee and explain to us what the they had a problem with the screen and they're really sorry, but they still didn't give us any kind of hard date uh, for a release. You know, you'd think that they could at least say, okay, six months for sure, we'll have it, you know, but no, it's just like, we still have no idea when we're going to get this wallet to you. Uh, so yeah, so we've got, and they discontinued the Ledger Nano S anyway. So now all they have is Ledger Nano S plus Ledger Nano X, which is their go-to wallet and Ledger stacks. So before we get too far into talking about wallets, uh, let's jump into that wonderful news. Bitcoin has broken 30K as ETF hopes drives bulls. ETF, of course, stands for uh, Exchange Traded Fund, which is uh, uh, a uh, something you can buy on a stock exchange, uh, an instrument or whatever you call it. It's kind of like a stock. Um, but uh, the company holds Bitcoin, and uh, that fund that they use to hodl their Bitcoin is uh, can be bought and sold. It's spread into pieces, and it can be bought and sold. And you're sort of indirectly investing in Bitcoin. So uh, that's really exciting. A lot of people, you know, you saw me spiel about wallets, and you got to learn how to hodl your Bitcoin and transfer your Bitcoin in your crypto. And a lot of people, when you start telling them that, their eyes get kind of glassy. Um, so they just want to call somebody or go on to, you know, their broker who they trust and click, you know, buy Bitcoin ETF. And so that'll open up Bitcoin to a lot of investors uh, who wouldn't normally otherwise invest in Bitcoin. So that's, it's been uh, the holy grail of the Bitcoin market since 2017. We've been talking about Bitcoin ETFs. And they seem like they're finally getting closer. So here we go. Bitcoin crossed 30 grand uh, during the morning hours of Friday. And if we look right now, we're, we're over 30. Hmm? That's pretty good. And over on crypto.com, if we look on there, um, I don't know why they're always a tad higher. Uh, I always thought it was because they're in Asia. I don't really know, but they're a little uh, higher. Um, and it's even come down a little bit. I guess it was like 30,300 30, over on crypto.com. Uh, crypto.com, uh, a phone based iOS cryptocurrency exchange where you can buy and sell, hold, stake um, cryptocurrency. Uh, deposit, withdraw, and then you also have this uh, Crypto.com card that you can use to uh, purchase things in the real world. Anywhere they accept Visa, you can see that uh, I'm using it for my uh, trash and my uh, Netflix and Spotify. Uh, I don't get rebates for those anymore, but I've been doing them on there for a long time. Uh, but it's pretty cool. I mean, if you have Bitcoin in your Crypto.com wallet, you can sell it and top up your card right away and spend that Bitcoin. Hey, and that's what everybody asks me. How do I spend my Bitcoin? How do I uh, cash out? And Crypto.com is a great way. Um, but it is not a wallet, right? It's, it's a, uh, an exchange, but it is a pretty convenient exchange. Uh, so we're over 30. That's great. Tokens formed by the forking of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV jumped as much as 26%. That's weird, <laughs> um, which is a sign of possible irrational exuberance. I love that. Yeah. I mean, who would buy Bitcoin Cash? Um, if you're not aware, Bitcoin Cash uh, is basically... Bitcoin um, up until 2017, they share uh, the same blockchain, but then Bitcoin Cash forked off onto its own block because of a dispute with the programmers. Uh, the people from Bitcoin Cash uh, will tell you they're the real Bitcoin. Uh, and then there's Bitcoin SV, which forked off of Bitcoin Cash. Um, these are uh, other Bitcoin forks, but their market value is nowhere near what Bitcoin is. But people have been buying them lately. That's interesting. Not sure why. Uh, several ETF providers amended their filings 
over multiple days in the past week alongside pressure on the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to soften its stance on a Bitcoin ETF approval. Uh, House Financial Services Committee members urged the SEC to listen to the courts and give up efforts to block Bitcoin ETFs from regulatory approval in a letter to SEC Chair Gary Gensler. So Gary Gensler is finally getting some pressure from the government, right? <laughs> the Congress is finally saying, hey, you know, ease up, dude. Uh, we got so we want to invest in Bitcoin too. Come on, uh, so interesting, right? Uh, hopes of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust being converted into an ETF riled up some traders. Uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is one of the largest institutional Bitcoin holdings, and Grayscale is among several other asset managers who have applied for a Bitcoin spot ETF. Other major firms in the race include BlackRock, Fidelity, and Wisdom Tree. So great news. And uh, I got another story linked down below. Um, you know, this is kind of a chartist story. Uh, Dan uh, was talking earlier in the uh, chat about uh, Bitcoin being in a range, uh, and it has been. And uh, I think Dan was saying, let's see, what does Dan say here? We've been stuck between uh, 25 2 and 31 350 for seven months. Until we break out and retest, there will be no bull run. Wise words from Dan, who is our resident chartist and um, <clears throat> um, moderator for our um, uh, live stream. Uh, so if you have any <clears throat> questions about trading uh, you, and charts, you might want to ask Dan while you're in here. He knows a lot about more. He knows more about that stuff than I do. Uh, but here we go. If Bitcoin can break 32,000, which is kind of what where Dan's at, too, if it, if it can break out of that range, if it breaks 32K and retests, um, then uh, we're going to be looking good, right? Uh, data from coin markets captured a new two-month BTC high uh, of 30,233 on Bitstamp. This is uh, BTC USD pair, I believe when they talk about that trading pair. Uh, with a slight come down taking place at the time of writing, taking the spot price back below 29.5. Uh, with volatility still evident, market participants argued that a weekly candle close was needed in order to establish the rally's true staying power. And I think that weekly candle close is marked on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, if I'm not if I'm correct, Dan, uh, it might be seven. I'm not sure. Uh, so charts are looking good. But as Dan stated, and as this article stating, we need to break out above 32 to really, you know, get into a bull run type situation. It's great that Bitcoin is up. I'm happy. We're all happy. <laughs> but um, pardon me. <coughs> yeah, we really need to break out of that range. All right. And then uh, some of the big news here is that uh, SEC drops charges against Ripple. Uh, uh, Ripple leaders. Uh, so we're not out of the woods yet, uh, but they, they had sued the, the two, Brad Garlinghouse and uh, someone else. Uh, but they still are, are have stuff coming up against the company. So we're not completely out of the woods, but uh, this is a great sign. All right. Uh, U.S. Securities and Exchange uh, will no longer pursue claims against Ripple's uh, CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, and ex executive chairman, Chris Larson, that they aided and abetted the company in violating federal security laws. Okay, so if they work for the company and you were accusing them of aiding and abetting the company for violating federal security laws and they're like running the company and you've dropped charges against them... So I guess that means that you're you shouldn't be still saying that the company violated federal security laws. It's kind of hair splitting, if you ask me. Uh, in its XRP transactions, canceling a trial schedule for next year and giving the crypto company another victory in the agency's long running suit against it while moving the regulator closer to appealing a federal judge's court ruling in the case. 
According to a filing Thursday afternoon, the parties agreed to voluntarily dismiss the aiding and abetting charges against the two executives with prejudice, which means the charges cannot be filed again. That's good. The SEC will continue pursuing its claims against Ripple, the filing said. All right. And on that news, Bitcoin crossed 30,000, 30, which we all know. And uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV jumping up. Um, FTX's general counsel never approved. Oh, well, this is this is kind of a, a news. The FTX trial is still going on. I'm not going to really talk about that too much, but uh, there is full coverage up here in this link if you're into that sort of thing. And um, uh, S SEC likely to approve spot Bitcoin ETF in the next few months, according to JP Morgan. Now, this is quite... Uh, startling coming from a company uh, who used to bash Bitcoin quite a bit. Uh, now uh, JP Morgan is bullish on Bitcoin, eh? Kind of uh, shows you how much things have changed. Uh, approval is likely before January 10th, okay, which is the final deadline uh, for the ARC 21 shares application. Uh, that's what Dan was saying too, right? Um, Jan of 24. We'll see. Bitcoin has gained this week due to an increased optimism about the potential approval of multiple spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, ETFs, JP Morgan said in a research report Wednesday. The Securities and Exchange Commission decision not to appeal the ruling uh, in the Grayscale case brings the approval of the applications closer. Um, Timing of the approval is unclear, but should happen within months and probably before January 10th, the final deadline for ARC 21 shares led by Nicolas. Ooh, I'm not even going to try that one. <laughs> uh, ETFs are traded on an exchange like stocks and track the performance of an underlying asset. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> They are popular because they allow investors to gain access to cryptocurrencies without having to purchase. Well, thank you, DotKid100, for the subscription. Appreciate that. The crypto market is hopeful that the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF will lead to a flood of mainstream money into the sector. All right. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm pretty lax on the news. Uh, did uh, Kenny Kenneth sent me some uh, news stories, which I'll just uh, briefly um, SEC seeks court order for omnibus brief against Binance, Binance US, and CZ. Um, I, I thought this was that they were going to dismiss it, but I guess they're still going after uh, Binance and Binance US. So the SEC does not like these exchanges. Um, uh, Judah Lyon, thanks for that sub subscription. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. The, the securities regulator aims to dismiss the complaint. Oh, I see. Binance US filed a complaint against the SEC, and the SEC is trying to get that dismissed. So the SEC has still not given up on Ripple and Binance or Binance US, right? So there's still a lot of pressure coming from the SEC. Uh, hopefully, the, the good people over in our Congress, the ones we elected, uh, will uh, get him to change his tune, right? Uh, let's see. What was this other story that he sent me earlier today? Uh, there's still some concern about uh, crypto finance terrorism. We went over that story uh, last week or the week before. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, is a transparent blockchain, so uh, a lot of uh, terrorists... Uh, it's not really their uh, method of choice, right? They're, they're much better off with cash. Um, and there are analytic tools for analyzing the Bitcoin blockchain. There are some big firms doing this. So it's getting harder and harder to hide your activities, especially using Bitcoin. Uh, but the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network issued an alert uh, 20 October aimed at several financial institutions, the goal being to identify suspicious activity related to funding terrorist groups. The alert specifically highlighted the mil militant group Hamas, which was responsible for the attack on Israel on 7 October. 
Uh, Helmus has been undertaking fundraising campaigns involving virtual currencies and fictitious charities, raising both fiat and virtual currency to finance its activities. In response to this, FinCEN urged virtual asset service providers and other financial institutions to be vigilant. Okay. Um, and then uh, you had, yeah, the, the Charlie Munger story. We got to put this up. Bitcoin is the stupid and stupidest investment ever, according to Charlie Munger. <laughs> Berkshire, did he say this again? I mean, he said it before. Uh, while giving a recent, okay, here we go. While giving a recent keynote address uh, for Zoom's 2023 Zoomtopia conference, the Berkshire vice president said Bitcoin is the stupidest investment I ever saw. I ever saw. He didn't stop there, though. <laughs> Went on to say that the most cryptocurrencies aren't just unprofitable, but he thinks bag holders will eventually lose all their money. Don't get me started on Bitcoins. <laughs> Bitcoins. <laughs> most of those investments are going to zero. <laughs> well, you know, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? <laughs> Referring to all cryptos as Bitcoins. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, it's correct that most uh, it's correct that most cryptocurrencies will likely go to zero, at least so far that has historically been true of cryptocurrency projects. There have been thousands of new crypto projects created since the genesis of Bitcoin and its decentralized computing cousin Ethereum. Uh, and that that is true. Uh, a lot of crypto projects are kind of um, they try to get in on the momentum and uh, there was a lot of uh, FOMO. Uh, fear of missing out in 2020 and 2021 uh, with a lot of altcoins. Um, and it seems that uh, because of um, the Terra Luna collapse, the F, which was a cryptocurrency uh, stablecoin project, uh, algorithmic stablecoin, that happened in 2021 or 22, I don't remember now. Um, and then the FTX collapse, I guess both of these were 2022, which was the you know big cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, a lot of these altcoins have uh, crashed horribly, and uh, it seems like people are getting back to basics, right? Bitcoin and Ethereum. But there are still a lot of great cryptocurrency projects out there, but there are thousands of them. And a lot of people tend to jump on these small ones hoping to really, you know, strike it rich, you know, by buying something for pennies on the dollar. Uh, but that's risky behavior. All right. Uh, so... Crypto Mike 68 caught me live. That's cool. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to catch up with the stream just a little bit. Do you have a preference on who is approved for the first ETF? I think Grayscale deserves it. Um, I don't really. I mean, I, I'm, I, the, the story that we read seems to imply uh, that once one is approved, others will get approved. So it will kind of like be an avalanche once it happens. So I really don't have a preference over which one gets approved first because I think, you know, the first one will, you know, be the first domino, right? That, that's my, that's just my opinion. Uh, Blockstream Jade Hardware Company database has been leaked. I have never managed to get my hands on a Blockstream Jade. I'm going to talk about wallets tonight. We're, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what's the best hardware wallet. Well, spoiler alert, that was clickbait because there is no best hardware wallet. I'm, I'm admitting that to everybody here now. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you uh, what I think are the best uh, options that you have based on several factors, right? Security always seems to be number one for everyone, uh, which is uh, not a, a good attitude to take if you really don't know what you're doing. Uh, I don't know how to fix a car, right? I would never try. Uh, I don't know anything about cars. Um, so I'm not going to, but I don't, that doesn't make me dumb. It just means I don't know anything about cars. And there's a lot of people that really don't know anything about crypto or crypto wallets. And they think I want the most secure wallet I can find. And so they go in and they get a wallet and then they can't figure out how to use it. Uh, or they, they manage to get some crypto in there and then they can't figure out how to get it out. Uh, so, you know, to just use security as your only criterion for a crypto wallet is uh, not 
smart, right? If you want to be smart about a crypto wallet, you need to find a crypto wallet that is secure, of course, but it's got to be one that you can use, one that you can figure out how to use. Ease of use is very important. If you're good, if you're knowledgeable, then, hey, get one of the, you know, the, the top of the line, cold card or whatever, uh, the most secure wallet you can ever think of is. But be very careful with this mindset of being super secure. I've seen so many people lose crypto by focusing on that and not just learning how to use a wallet properly. Um, because it is overwhelming. And then, of course, not everybody can afford a uh, $150 wallet or, you know, 219 for a Trezor T, which is a great wallet. Um, somebody, you know, a lot of people, uh, and all they, they want to use uh, Bitcoin, they don't want to b- uh, manage a bunch of altcoins, then just grab like one of the slower tier models, like um, the Ledger Nano S Plus or uh, the... Um, Trezor uh, 1 or their new one, Trezor 3, right? Just get you something um, that's pretty easy to use and affordable, right? So we've got a lot of considerations. Uh, Time change is coming. Okay. When is that time? Just coming up pretty soon, huh? Thanks for your help earlier. Brilliant. All my best. Oh, good, Simon. uh, Simon. I hope you were able to figure that out. We are going to go over here to uh, Coinbase here. Uh, Before I get uh, Babylon too much, why don't we do that? Let's jump over to Coinbase and buy a little bit of uh, Bitcoin, right? Um, And I think that, um, I guess Simon was over here. Well, he had already bought his Bitcoin uh, and he was trying to uh, move it out. And I think he was having some issues with that. Uh, I just want to let people know that sometimes Coinbase will, and this is even me, and I've had my Coinbase account since like 2017, buy some Bitcoin on Coinbase and then they won't let me withdraw it right away because they're they're sticking to their policy of three to five business days, uh, which basically means they don't want uh, to allow somebody that uh, hasn't proved themselves or has proved themselves or whatever, uh, they have every policy, their policy is different for every user, which is kind of weird, but that's the way it works. They have all these uh, algorithms or whatever, and then they, they evaluate your behavior or whatever, and they might say, okay, Rex is cool, we know him, uh, he buys a lot of Bitcoin, and then he moves it out to his wallet, that's normal behavior for him. Uh, somebody else, you know, comes in, buys five grand worth of Bitcoin and tries to pull it out to a wallet. Mm, might be a little dicey, right? We don't know this guy very well. He hasn't been on Coinbase that long. Um, or he's been on Coinbase a long time, but he normally just leaves his Bitcoin in Coinbase, right? He doesn't normally withdraw, right? So uh, they analyze your behavior and sometimes they won't let you withdraw right away. They make you wait three to five business days before you can withdraw your crypto after you purchase it. All right, just want to point that out. But I'm going to go over to Coinbase Advanced. Um, I believe you get a better deal when you do it this way. Um, uh, well, let me just show you. If you go onto Coinbase and say, okay, I want to buy 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin, right? Notice they're going to charge you $299 for that. Uh, that's kind of steep. Right. You can get a better deal on Coinbase if you just go over to their advanced trading mode. Um, It's a little more complicated. uh, And oops, what have I done here? Right. Okay. what you have to do is deposit the dollars first and then um, make the trade. Right. It's it's a little just another extra step here. So let's do it. Let's hit deposit. We're going to deposit U.S. dollar. And I'll bring it in from my Chase Bank here, and it's 50 bucks, right? And uh, we, I've linked my bank accounts with Plaid. Um, some people are uncomfortable with that, but I find it, you know, it's the modern uh, third-party payment processor that verifies bank accounts, right? So that means I don't have to give Coinbase my banking info, right? It, there's somebody in the middle there. Some people don't like Plaid, but anyway, I digress. Right, we hit continue. Um, the money from my bank drops into Bitcoin. Boom. 
uh, I get I get everything instantly, right? Now I don't know if it it might tell you uh, send or cash out. It says instantly on the bottom. Yours might say, oh, um, you you've got a three to five business day wait. I don't know, or maybe you may may not notice that, right? Uh, but I've, like I said, uh, my behavior is, has been analyzed, right? I've been using Coinbase for many years. There's nothing suspicious about me coming in there and buying 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin and wanting to withdraw it right away. Um, now, uh, if we go over my portfolio, you can see that I've got some U.S. dollar in my account, but not Bitcoin. So how do I get Bitcoin? I'll go over here to Spot. Right. And you can pull this down and choose any of these trading pairs that you're interested in. Most of them are U.S. dollar pairs, but some of them are, you know, swapping between cryptos, you know, like between Bitcoin and ETH. If you have ETH in your account, uh, we're just going to do the regular BTC to dollar. I'm going to go over here to buy. I'll, I'll choose market and I'll just choose max. Oh, they used to have a slider here. They, they moved it there. That's not there anymore. It's like 25, 50 and max. Okay, makes sense. I'll just spend all the dollar to buy Bitcoin. Boom. All right. And so we're good there. We bought our Bitcoin. Now when we go to our portfolio and uh, it's showing that I've got uh, Bitcoin in here now. Uh, there was a little bit of Ethereum in there as well. So uh, let's move this Bitcoin from uh, Coinbase to a wallet. And uh, let's go ahead and use my Trezor for this. So um, I have my Trezor. Um, uh, we've got everything set up here. I've got my uh, Trezor. I've got my little camera pointing down. So uh, we can, uh, we'll use the Trezor. Uh, let's see here. Okay, camera's working, everything's good. So we'll just tap here and uh, I'll need to enter my pin. This is a Trezor T. Uh, I talked about the Trezor T briefly. Uh, this is the um, flagship cryptocurrency hardware wallet from the Trezor company. Um, and it's $219. So it's kind of steep, but uh, for ease of use and security, this is a great choice for a cryptocurrency wallet. It's pretty easy to use uh, as well. So I would highly recommend the Trezor T wallet. The only drawback to the Trezor line is that they, there are a lot of cryptos that they don't, they don't support yet. So like uh, po Polkadot, and I don't believe they support the Cosmos chains yet. Uh, they might through third party, I'm not sure. But uh, that's really the only drawback, is that uh, the number of cryptocurrencies that they support is somewhat limited for people that want to get, like, want to manage lots of different cryptos. But if all you want to manage is Bitcoin and Ethereum, or just Bitcoin, this is an awesome choice. All right, so I'm going to enter my PIN here. Hopefully I put the right pin in. All right, so the, the wallet is unlocked. I used my stream deck for that. I pressed my button. <laughs> uh, let's launch Trezor Suite. Uh, Trezor Suite is the uh, accompanying software that you can download for uh, your Trezor model. Um, also, uh, this, the Trezor is fully open source. It's one of the great things about the Trezor is that it's fully open source. Um, it's software, it's um, firmware, it's architecture, everything. Hi, Kitty. I see Kitty's here. Um, hopefully Kitty won't jump up. Yeah, I know. You're going to jump up here and roll on the keyboard. He likes to do that. All right, so uh, I've loaded the, key, uh, the one key. Oh, this is not the right wallet. Oh, the one key is also connected in Trezor Suite. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Let me eject that. That's pretty weird. 
Uh, come on, Rex. There we go. Did I just eject this or did I just eject it? Hmm? Oh, I, I think maybe I should just unplug it. Maybe that'll do it. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Okay. But uh, there should be... Let's give it a minute here. Uh, let me relaunch it. See, that's what happens when you have all kinds of weird stuff. Can, oh, Kitty is here. Okay. All right, Kitty. Yeah, Kitty wants some love. I know. You know I'm in the middle of my live stream, don't you? Oh, okay, here we go. So, uh, <laughs> please don't, no, don't get on the keyboard. You're going to get that. All right, so let's. I want to go back here so you, you can see what I'm doing specifically. Sorry. Um, so we have to choose standard wallet or hidden wallet, right? Hidden wallet, I would enter a passphrase here and uh, hide my crypto configuration behind a passphrase. This is dual security, but it is very um, unforgiving, right? If I forget my passphrase, I will lose access to the crypto. <laughs> John Lux, you scared Kitty. <laughs> Kitty jumped up when uh, the music started. John Lux, thank you for that. Uh, bought multiple treasures and had bad luck with touchscreens being too sensitive. Double entries galore. Ever had that? Um, no, I've never had um, trying to punch something in on my Trezor um, where I got a double, like when I hit a number. My problem with the Trezor T is I'm fat fingered and sometimes it's hard for me to enter the pin. Um, but I've never had like pressed on a key and have it double entry on me. Um, and I'm going to show you how we do a confirmation uh, here in a sec for uh, a Bitcoin address. So uh, let's use the device a little bit right now. Um, basically what I wanna do is uh, go into my Bitcoin account here and do a receive, right? Because we just bought some Bitcoin on Coinbase. And when I click show full address, we need to confirm this on the device, and that's over here. Uh, I don't think I have this one on the stream deck anyway. Okay. Oh, that camera flaked on me, but anyway. Uh, you can see here, it wants me to confirm the address, right? So I can look at the address on my device and then make sure it's the same one I see on my screen and then hit confirm. So uh, that worked out okay. Uh, maybe we'll try later to actually move uh, out of the wallet, but for, for now, let's put some Bitcoin in the wallet because sometimes Bitcoin... Uh, movement can take a bit. So uh, let's do uh, withdraw. Oh boy, look at this cat. He's just going nuts. He's just stretching. He just thinks he owns this place. Yeah. Oh, something happened because he hit the, he hit the F1 key again. <laughs> Come on, kitty. All right, let's get back here. All right, so uh, we're <laughs> ah, it's cat. Okay, all right. I'm gonna send my Bitcoin right there. Bitcoin is the uh, one that's right here, and then we'll hit send, and then uh, whoops, what am I doing here? Select asset to send. Okay, I did. Oh, okay. Now I got to put in how much? I hit max. Uh, oh, okay, so I, I think Simon was asking me when this happened, he wasn't getting his send, but he was pasting in his address. Oh my God, this cat is killing me. All right, there's the address. Okay, so now I've got preview send. Marco, oh my God, this cat. Okay, preview send. John Lux, okay. Oh, that's the same one. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Now we can send, right? So I'm not sure what was going wrong with Simon earlier. Uh, let's hit send now. And then I need my two-factor from my uh, Google Authenticator app, All right? So I'll just go over to my Google Authenticator and uh, get my code for... Uh, oh, it's like all the way down here. Isn't that crazy? 
Okay, let's do this. So five, one, oops, up. Oh, I need to wait, there's a cycle. Okay, okay, off it goes. Come on, kitty, don't screw me right now while I'm in the middle of a transaction. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. All right, so we're done there, boom. All right, now we can go back over to Trezor Suite and wait for that Bitcoin to arrive. That Bitcoin was empty? Okay. All right, well, it needed some Bitcoin in there, didn't it? <laughs> All right, let me catch up on chat here. Uh, if you're using Ledger Live to send your crypto with your Ledger device, the wallet does not charge any additional fees other than the transaction fee required by the network you're using. Thank you. Very well put. Dan, uh, a lot of people have problems with uh, blockchain fees. I ha okay, John Lux mentioned that. I have had huge issues with Trezor touchscreen being so sensitive. I get double entries. Um, I, I personally have not really noticed that. I'm assuming that's when you're trying to enter your PIN. But as I mentioned, I also have trouble entering the PIN just because I'm fat-fingered and I hit the wrong key sometimes. Uh, let's see, diesel cane, who gets the fee? Oh, blockchain fees go to, uh, on the blockchain. Uh, when Bitcoin miners mine Bitcoin and, uh, they finish a block or discover a block and receive their reward, they receive the reward of new Bitcoin, but they also receive, uh, all of the transaction fees accumulated in the block that they completed. So um, and the, in answer to your question, Bitcoin fees go to Bitcoin miners. Uh, that's how the system works, right? Um, no one would maintain the Bitcoin blockchain if it wasn't, it wasn't in their interest, right? Uh, they're not, no, I mean, uh, I know there are a lot of good people out there that, um, you know, uh, contribute to society, but we're talking about a decentralized currency. And so uh, the way the Bitcoin blockchain works is that it's a community project, right? People can use the blockchain for a small fee, and those fees go to the people that are maintaining the blockchain. That's kind of uh, sums it up. Uh, why would anyone want to participate in such a network when there is no reward? Uh, free fee crypto, fee free crypto. Yeah. Uh, does Ledger use Confit to do the transaction? And can it be sent directly to your bank account? Is that advisable? You cannot simply directly cash out from a wallet, right? I think I touched on that earlier. Uh, and that Bitcoin came into our wallet here. We see, uh, we got that. Uh, let's see if we go back to this part. Uh, we've got that pending incoming transaction. Has not completely verified on the blockchain yet. Uh, but uh, there's, there's kind of a distinction that, that people, uh, and rightly so, I get it, people tend to th think, I've got a wallet and it's got Bitcoin in it. Why can't I just like snap my fingers and have that Bitcoin go directly to my bank? I get that question a lot. I totally understand why um, people would want to do that. Um, it's just not that simple. Um, you can't just, your bank won't, well, first of all, your bank won't take crypto. I mean, number a number one, your bank does not accept Bitcoin. I cannot walk into my bank up to a teller and show them Bitcoin on my phone and say, here, let me send you some Bitcoin. I, I need 300 bucks. I'll send you 300 bucks worth of Bitcoin. That does not happen in any world. Uh, it's getting closer. Some banks are offering Bitcoin custody. PayPal offers Bitcoin custody. Cash App offers Bitcoin custody. But there is a separation right? Those are custodial type apps. If you're using those type of apps, you're not really holding your own Bitcoin. The only way to hold your own Bitcoin is in a wallet, be it a hot wallet, soft wallet, hard wallet, you know, cold wallet, hot, whatever kind of wallet, you know, uh, I advocate you use a hardware based wallet like Trezor, right? But you can't just swap Bitcoin for dollars. Your, your bank is not going to accept a transfer of Bitcoin, right? So there, there are people in the middle. 
One of those types of services is a cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase. So if I had my Bitcoin, uh, we've moved it out now, it shouldn't be there anymore. But if I have my Bitcoin on an exchange, then yes, I could, I have my exchange connected to my bank. I can sell my Bitcoin for dollars and cash out. Lickety split right into my bank. Man, it takes banking hours, you know, it takes like 24 hours or whatever to go get into my bank. But it's, it's a, they have a connection to my bank. My wallet does not, right? I cannot just like move, snap my, you know, flip my wallet, you know, from Bitcoin directly to my bank. It just doesn't work like that. Now, uh, there are a lot of uh, wallets and software for wallets that want you to think you can do that, but they, and they make it seem easy, but they're always using a third party under the hood to do that. You're never really just transferring directly from your wallet to your bank. Just, I wish it were that easy, but it's not. It would be nice, but that's not how Bitcoin works. Uh, so we did that. Now I wanted to do another one. And uh, before I blab away, let's get this one started. Um, I wanted to show you a Tangem transaction. Uh, here's Tangem. Tangem is a, a unique cryptocurrency solution uh, that uses a, an NFC card, near field communication card, to store the private key. Um, pretty cool. And uh, so it's a, a, a lot easier to use. Um, and they have just introduced the uh, seed phrase. So uh, now you can back up your Tangem card with a seed phrase. So uh, it's a pretty unique solution. Uh, and, pardon me, it is open source. Their, their app software is open source. Uh, so it's quite an interesting solution. So I wanted to show you a transfer using Tangem over to um, Binance US. Let's go ahead and get logged in. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why I'm using Binance US here in a sec. It's because I have a particular kind of crypto in my wallet that uh, I can't send to Coinbase directly. But I can send to Binance US. Get that in there. All right. So let me show you what I've got here. Let me see if I can finagle this camera a little bit. To, yeah, the camera froze again. All right, we'll play. I, I was. Uh, Earlier, I was like, hey, this camera's been pretty trouble-free. But uh, all good things come to an end. Um, now, uh, let me show you what's going on over here. Oh, it froze. <laughs> okay, I give up. This camera is just not going to cooperate with me. Okay, I get it. All right, let me turn it off then. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah, let's just, uh, it's just me, you, and my hands. All right, so uh, let's move the treasure over a little bit. I have two Tangem cards here. Uh, this one is the new wallet. This, uh, this other Tangem is the older wallet. Uh, they just came out with a new wallet. Now, so if we go over here, uh, you can see the Tangem app. And you can see that I have a balance in my Tangem app. Now, what's cool is that you can manage multiple Tangem wallets in their app. So if you tap up in the top right corner here, you can see that uh, I have, this is the new wallet, right? This is the, uh, the wallet that is managed by this card. And then I can flip over to this wallet. Uh, and this is the wallet managed by this card. It's pretty cool. Now, I also have another wallet down here where I did a restore using uh, the restore feature on uh, a Tangem card. And it worked. It was a 24-word seed phrase. So it's pretty cool. A uh, very versatile wallet. Uh, this wallet here, the new one, has a seed phrase. I backed it up. All right. This wallet here relies on my three cards and only my three cards. So if I lose my three cards, I lose my crypto. 
but I have uh, the go-to card and two backups, right? So it's a pretty good solution for someone new to crypto that doesn't really get the whole seed phrase thing and wants to just set up this great wallet and use it and not have to worry about writing it down, saving it, storing it, or accidentally revealing it, which is one of the reasons I really like Tangent. Now, uh, I have some Tether in this wallet, but unfortunately, it's Tron-based Tether. And so I cannot, uh, I cannot um, deposit this in Coinbase because Coinbase does not support Tron-based Tether. But Binance US does. So I'm going to go over here, and I want to do a send, and I need to get an address. So where am I going to get an address? All right, we can get our address from our uh, Binance US. So if we go down to, uh, we just like search for it here. I'll hit deposit and uh, I'll hit tether, right? And I can scan this QR code. Let me show you, hopefully I haven't done my mic or muted my mic. Let's go back over here to main. All right, so uh, this is their uh, Tether address, right? I, I want to drop some Tether in here, but it's Tron-based Tether. So what do I do? Well, I'll take this drop down here, and I'll switch down to Tron, TRC20. Now I have a Tron address that I can send my uh, Tether to. So you can see my phone here, still waiting for that address. So I'll open up the camera. I'll scan the QR code, and that address goes into my uh, wallet, right? That's pretty cool. We'll go over here. Um, let's just do 200, and we'll go ahead and send that. Off it goes. Uh, now I need the card, right? I want to show you this part. This is the fun part, and hopefully I won't be too... Oh, come on, Rex. You can do it. No, not that. Okay, here. All right, I need to hold the card up. That's the private key right there. So I authorize the outgoing transaction simply by holding the card to the back of the phone. Couldn't be easier. I didn't have to punch anything in. I didn't have to fool around with any little buttons. I just held the card up to the back of the phone and the NFC technology uh, you know, did a handshake and authorized the transaction. The private key did not get sent across the NFC. I, I want to make that very clear. A lot of people uh, say that's not secure. Well, it's not sending the private key across the NFC connection. It is simply sending an authorization, which is an encrypted signal, right? It's a bunch of dots and zeros that are encrypted. So even if an attacker is snooping, they cannot, there's no private key to steal, right? It's just that one transaction, and even that is coded, right? They can't even see. It's not going to do them any good because it's authorizing a transaction from my wallet to Binance US. There's no way to go in there and alter it and send it somewhere else. It's got a hash on there. If someone tries to alter it, then the, the hash won't match and it won't work, right? That's what cryptography is all about. Uh, okay, so I think uh, maybe I've allayed your fears on the NFC technology. Uh, let's go over and see what's going on in our cryptocurrency exchange. This cat, are you hungry? What's your problem? Hmm? Yeah, this cat is uh, behind me, beside me, up in the window, underneath me. I know. He's, he's kind of upset because it's been raining for the last couple of days. So he has to stay inside. He's kind of stir crazy. All right, let's do full screen. Not that full screen. All right, thank God I haven't muted my mic this, this week yet. All right, so here we go. Uh, there's the balance. It came in really fast. So uh, what I wanted to do was take a little bit of Bitcoin <clears throat> and move it around between different wallets. 
So um, I'd like to put this, uh, some of this Bitcoin into a uh, ledger and maybe some into a one key. But let's say, hey, how can I cash this out, right? Um, Binance US does not allow direct fiat deposits and withdrawals anymore. So what if I wanted cash, right? So let's do a little bit of that. Uh, now I can move my tether from Binance US over to, to Binance, I'm sorry, to Coinbase. Coinbase uh, will allow me to receive tether. Uh, that's all well and good, right? I can get the address, I can go back over here, and then I can go to my tether, and I can say, okay, I would like to send my tether over to uh, all of it, let's say, over to Coinbase, right? A a uh, exchange to exchange transfer. Why am I doing this? Because I can't cash out from Binance, but I can from Coinbase. So if I move this crypto from here to there, I'll be able to cash it out. But when I hit preview, oh, 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 they don't like this these decimal places. Okay. All right. Uh, if we hit preview, notice I'm going to get charged $9.29 for that. Uh-uh. Don't like that at all. Uh, that's because Tether uses the Ethereum network. So there's got to be a better way. Well, okay, what's the better way? Let's see. Why don't we trade some of this Tether for Solana? We can do a Solana to Tether swap. And it's not going to cost us that much. We'll do market. <clears throat> oh, see, Binance US still has the slider. See, that Coinbase doesn't have anymore. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just use 50% for our uh, Solana purchase. We'll buy Solana. That happened really fast. Now, if we go to my wallet, you can see that I've got uh, some Tether and some Solana. Well, I can move the Solana to uh, Coinbase easy peasy, right? I'll just uh, click Solana. There's my Solana receiving address. Copy that into my clipboard. Go back over here to my Solana, and I'm going to do withdraw. And I'll just do the max, take off some of these decimals that Coinbase or Binance US doesn't like uh, on the Solana network. And I'll paste in my Solana address from Coinbase. Preview that. Okay, three, 30 cents. Okay, I'll take that over the $9. Might have been a little more if I was sending all of it. I don't know. Might have been a little less, depending. Uh, let's confirm that. Off it goes. I need my Google Authenticator code which I was showing you guys earlier. Uh, we want uh, Binance US. There it goes. And I also need to check an email. Oh, uh, huh. there it is. Okay, we need to confirm the withdrawal. And we're done. Now, another thing that I wanted to do while we're still here is uh, buy some Bitcoin. And we'll withdraw this Bitcoin, right? Let's do a uh, withdraw. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to buy some first. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin uh, Tether trading pair, right? We still have 100 bucks worth of Tether. So we'll uh, buy some Bitcoin market at 100%, although they don't like 100%. Sometimes they, they uh, but it worked. OK, sometimes you have to pull it down to 99 just to get the trade to go through if you're spending all of your money for some reason. All right. So uh, now we've got Bitcoin. Uh, our Solana is still showing as a balance, but uh, available uh, 0.26 because 100 bucks of it is on its way to Coinbase. All right, so now we've got some Bitcoin here. Let's move it out to one of our wallets. 
Um, we could do the tantrum, but I think I wanted to show you guys one key here. So uh, I'll go ahead and I guess I'll put it over here. Let's do it that way. I kind of got a couple of things going at the same time. Actually, let's do, 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 do. Let's hide the phone. We don't need that anymore. We can move these over here. Let's take this guy off. And the good people at One Key were kind enough to send me their One Key Classic, which is a really small and light uh, cryptocurrency hardware wallet. And uh, it wants me to do this over on. Oh, OK. All right. Let's go over here to One Key. Huh, OK. Oh, oh, I got to turn off Trezor Suite. Trezor Suite is giving me a hard time. That is really interesting that the One Key works with Trezor Suite. Uh -huh. OK. Yeah. All right, so let's put that there. Oh, I need to enter my pin to unlock it. Okay, I got it. I'll do that. All right, well, I'm going to enter my pin here. Little, oh, well, I can't really show you me entering the pin. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. Um, basically, that just takes me to uh, the device home screen, right? That's just what the device looks like when it's at rest, right? Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. All right, so this is my one key classic wallet. As you can see, there's a little Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana in here already. Uh, so we're going to do another receive. And uh, we're going to receive some Bitcoin. Uh, check, the re check the address on the device to show the QR code. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, so that's cool. Let's go over here. See, that's showing me the uh, Bitcoin address that I, uh, this is my hardware verification. So that Bitcoin address is, I double check that, make sure it's the same one I see on my screen. I'll hit confirm. And then we can go back here. And now I've got my Bitcoin address, right? I can copy this address into my clipboard and then just go back over to Binance US and do a withdraw. And this time, well, I, we're going to get hit with a Bitcoin charge on this. I kind of hate to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, let's max it out. Take some of these decimals off. And uh, we'll paste in the address here. And we'll hit preview. They're going to charge me a lot. OK. But I'm just going to eat it just f so I can do this demo. We'll hit confirm withdrawal. I'll, I'll put in my uh, Google code. All right, and I also need to confirm this in. Um, this is the Bitcoin address, or I mean, this is the Bitcoin withdrawal. We'll confirm that, and it's gone. Like I said, I really, uh, I probably shouldn't have done a Bitcoin withdrawal from Binance US, uh, but I wanted to show you more than one exchange withdrawal. Right. Um, it's much I, I, I would have been better off swapping all of that for Solana and then uh, using that uh, to, to, to do my withdrawal. But I wanted to stick with Bitcoin. I wanted to show you a different a couple of different withdrawals. All right. So should be getting some more Bitcoin coming into this wallet shortly. And we'll see where that where that goes. We can go check our Coinbase uh, for that incoming Solana. Which might take, uh, looks like it's here. Yeah. 
So the Solana came in really fast, right? So um, how do I cash out from um, Binance US? Uh, the best way is to simply um, use Solana or some other um, fast, cheap crypto to do my uh, transfer rather than Ethereum. I could have done Polygon, Blue Mars, thanks for that subscription. I could have done uh, Polygon, I could have done Atom. Uh, I said Polygon is Matic. Um, S Stellar might have been cheaper than uh, any, anything besides the Ethereum or Bitcoin. I don't know why Bit Binance US charges such high withdrawal fees for Bitcoin. I think it's a flat fee or whatever, but it's like really heinous if you ask me. All right, so now uh, we've done a couple of transfers. Uh, I want to kind of do some wallet to wallet stuff here, but I did also want to uh, demonstrate a cash out, right? So we've got some uh, Solana here. Uh, let's trade it for dollar. Uh, we're going to sell it. Uh, we'll sell it all. And uh, we're using dollar, Solana to dollar. Uh, and then we'll go back here. And we'll refresh that. So now we've got dollars instead of Solana. Uh, and now we can cash out. So we can go over here and use this withdraw to do the cash out. Uh, you can also do it pretty easy from normal Coinbase. Um, it doesn't cost you any more to cash out on normal Coinbase. Uh, let's see. <laughs> but how do you do it? Uh, let's see. We go to My Assets. Uh, the dollar is here. We click that. And then uh, we can hit cash out over here. We can cash it all out. I see leave a little bit in. We'll hit continue. And I can send it to whatever bank I have connected. Right? This is the answer to the how do I cash out question. You use a crypto exchange. right? But you have to move your crypto out of your wallet onto an exchange. Uh, let's see. I'll do the Huntington Bank. Eh, why not? Oh, no, I won't do a... Oh, Huntington can do an instant. Okay. I'll do an instant. What the heck? I'll do an instant to my Huntington. Uh, they're going to cause, they're going to charge me a little bit, but what the heck? I've been getting charged, uh, back and forth anyway. Thank you for that. Uh, I missed who, uh, did that. M Mark C. Oh, it was a Mark C. Super Chat. Was that what it was? Hang on. Maybe I'm looking from last week. Uh, that was Tracy Garrison subscribing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. I appreciate that. All right. So that's our cash out. Right. And I can check my little banking app here. <laughs> the Huntington check. The, the Huntington won't let me. Do it because it says, hey, I can see that you've got your sharing your phone screen. So uh, I would have to. <laughs> oh, Huntington. OK, so uh, let me go ahead and just quit that for now. Uh, where is it? This one. Right. I quit X Mirage. Huntington's like, hey, you're sharing your screen, you dumb dumb. Ugh, come on. All right. Now it's happy. And I can assure you that the money is in my bank account right now. It, it moved. I, I paid a little extra to get it uh, to do an instant. But um, if I'd have done it regular, it probably I probably wouldn't have seen it in the bank until like maybe Monday or Tuesday. So that's a cash out, right? Coinbase. Uh, there are other ways to cash out. I talked to you about Crypto.com earlier. Uh, Crypto.com can uh, you can load up your card and use your card to buy stuff, or you can uh, do a cash out on Coinbase on um, uh, Crypto.com too. You can connect your bank to Crypto.com and do cash outs. Um, a Kraken, you can do cash outs. Um, so, all right. So we ta we're talking about hardware wallets, right? We haven't done anything with our ledger tonight. 
Uh, so Ledger uh, is still, as far as I know, the number one hardware wallet in the world. They've uh, had a lot of controversy uh, because of their Ledger stacks, which uh, they pre-sold but couldn't deliver. Not a very good look for a professional company of any sort. <clears throat> and then they introduced a new feature called uh, Ledger Recover, which allows people to back up their uh, seed phrase to uh, Ledger service in an encrypted format, and the people just do not trust that at all. Right? Uh, there, there are the dilemma of crypto wallets is the um, the backup for many people. Uh, many people find uh, writing down a twenty-four word backup tedious and um, difficult, and then they have to store it. And a lot of people don't realize how important it is. And then they, a the scammer convinces them to reveal it to them, saying they're from tech support or whatever, right? So the, that's the biggest vulnerability of a crypto hardware wallet is that seed phrase. So we talked about Tangem's solution to that. Tangem's solution is to uh, never reveal the seed phrase to the user and simply use the cards as the backup. But a lot of people just did not care for that solution. And so um, they wanted a more flexible way of backup. So their Tangem has the optional seed phrase backup. But I like the Tangem solution of the non-seed phrase wallet. I mean, it's not that difficult to keep track of three cards. But there are other considerations like I don't know, down the down through the years, it has a 25 year guarantee. But what about 100 years from now? Uh, will the tangent card still work um, if that's your only uh, backup? Right. A seed phrase, I can guarantee you a seed phrase will still be good. Uh, 100 years, 200 years, maybe even a thousand years. A seed phrase will still it's, it's a representation of uh, a number, right? So a seed phrase is permanent, as long as you don't lose it, right? Um, in, if you put it on paper, it might fade, it might burn, it might get wet. So there are, you know, met metallic solutions for seed phrase backups. But a seed phrase basically is forever, right? Kind of like a diamond. But I love the Tangem solution for newcomers. It's, it's just so easy to use, and they've eliminated the seed phrase problem. Well, uh, as I mentioned, this is a big problem of people inadvertently revealing their seed phrase and getting their crypto stolen. And I'm sure there's every single day Ledger uh, gets a call from someone screaming at them to give them their crypto back because they inadvertently revealed their seed phrase to an attacker and or lost it and they've they need ledger to get their give them their money back well ledger never had their money ledger is just a wallet company but they get people screaming at them every day martin fernandez thank you for the sub subscription and so that's the biggest problem in crypto so somebody at ledger says hey how can we solve this problem well why don't we offer a service where we'll help them back up their seed phrase, right? And that's where they stepped over the line, right? Most people in crypto don't agree with this strategy. A, a private key should be private and managed privately. But Ledger is trying to solve the issue of newcomers mismanaging their seed phrase, and this was their solution. So uh, I would never do it, uh, but it does seem cryptographically sound from what I've read about it, and they are doing their best to make the whole process transparent. Okay? Um, and I don't believe that the upgraded firmware is a, uh, a vulnerability to their wallet, but some people do. But anyway, why don't we go ahead and drop some crypto in our ledger from the... Uh, let's move it from the one key. I don't know how much... Uh, I still don't see that crypto yet. Oops. 
Whoops. Um, hmm, okay. I don't see an incoming yet either. Pretty sure we sent it here. We'll just have to wait. Uh, but the Binance US told me that my deposit was... Let me see what it's telling me. Um... Oh, it said it said that it's done with the Bitcoin. So hopefully <laughs> we'll see it in here pretty soon. Make it flip back and forth here. Unless this is a different wallet. It can't be the different wallet, can it? No, I've got it connected, don't I? Oh wait. Yes, yes. Okay, so there's more. Yeah, I have a one key touch and I have a one key classic. And the one key classic is connected. All right, so let's give it a, a minute and see what happens. Hopefully it will show up. <laughs> oh, history. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is October 24th, and I just received 83, but it's still uh, pending. Okay, well, it says it's here. I don't know why it's not showing up in the balance. So yeah, we had a balance before and we just got 82. I thought we had more. Um, I guess we didn't send it all. Yeah, I'm doing this live, guys. So I'm like, help me, help me. There it goes. There it is. Okay, there. So we got it. Okay. So uh, we moved Bitcoin from uh, Binance US into our one key wallet. And uh, we have some in our Trezor suite as well. And I kind of wanted to move around one Bitcoin uh, to multiple places. So um, why don't we move some from one key to Ledger, right? We got our Ledger over here. Uh, this is Ledger Live. This is a software we use to manage our uh, Ledger wallet. I have a Ledger Nano X here, All right? I can drop some Bitcoin in here without connecting the device if I want to. I can just click here and tell Ledger Live to give me an address, which they will uh, do. Um, and basically, I just need to skip the hardware check by saying I don't have my device. It's perfectly capable of generating a Bitcoin address for me. Uh, now, this is a, 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 a SegWit wallet. This is an older type wallet. But I'll go ahead and uh, use this. We'll copy that into our clipboard. We'll go over here to one key. Uh, we'll go into our Bitcoin account. We'll do a send, right? Now we're doing wallet to wallet send. And I will paste in the address there of my Bitcoin wallet. Let's hit next. Oh, we still got that thing connected over there. It's good. How much do I want to send? Uh, let's see. I want to send 50. No, I don't have 50 Bitcoin. But uh, I don't have 14,000 Bitcoin or whatever or dollars. I do have $50 worth of Bitcoin. Right. Uh, let's hit next. It should let us do this because that was in there. OK, it's telling me it's going to take 50 minutes. It's kind of long. Uh, and now I need to confirm this on my device. So let's look at the device. All right. We're over here again. So now we're confirming an outgoing transaction. Right. We have. Uh, some information here if it will come into focus for me. Hopefully. There it goes. Uh, okay, yeah. So I'm just confirming this outgoing transaction. I'll hit this confirm button. Uh, I'm confirming those blockchain fees. And off it goes. Pretty cool. All right, and then over here I'll say done. And so now we're sending some Bitcoin from my uh, one key classic wallet over to my ledger wallet. Now, am, uh, am I simply just moving? Uh, hmm. Am I just moving uh, Bitcoin uh, from this device to this device? Am I just beaming it between the devices? Like, you know, when you share pictures with your friends? Uh, like, no, that's not what's going on, really. Both of these devices are simply keys to unlock wallets or verify, you know, addresses. 
So the Bitcoin is out there on the blockchain. And uh, there was a blockchain wallet out there on the blockchain controlled by this device. And I used this device to unlock that Bitcoin and send it over to the wallet controlled by this device. We're moving Bitcoin back and forth on the blockchain, not in between the wallets. Just want to make that clear. But uh, I wanted to at least show you how that worked. All right, let's go back here. Let me catch up. Kind of stuff's coming in fast and furious. Let's go over to Ledger Live and kind of wait for the Bitcoin to arrive. I think it'll show up a lot sooner than we thought. Okay, Diesel, Diesel, Diesel. Asking a lot of questions, Mr. Kane. Thank you for being here. Sorry I've been busy uh, doing transfers and didn't see everything going on. Uh, Cost you $33 fee to send $14,000 on Ledger. Um, you can adjust your outgoing blockchain fee. It doesn't really change it that often. Uh, I don't know if you were sending Bitcoin or something else, but there are fees to move crypto. It's just a fact of life. Uh, $33 sounds a bit steep on $14,000. Um, I don't know what a percentage that is, but I've heard of very large Bitcoin transactions only costing a few dollars. So not sure why yours cost that much. Uh, and they vary by traffic load, as, as JDO pointed out. Uh, 39 for quicker. Woo, okay. Ouch. The sad part is you weren't charged 33. You were charged a small amount of Bitcoin. In two years, that small amount of Bitcoin could be worth 250 or more. <laughs> That's a sad thought. Uh, generally, fees are much lower. Yes, I have noticed that, that Bitcoin fees generally are much lower. Yeah. You could wait uh, and maybe uh, try to do the transfer in off hours. That, uh, that helps with Ethereum. So early, at, uh, early in the morning, late at night, Fees seem to be lower when the traffic isn't as high. Uh, let's see. U.S. dollar has multiple networks and it's cheap to send. No, yes. Uh, USDC, just like you saw me using the Tron network for Tether, um, I could have maybe used uh, a different network. I could have used Polygon to go between um, Binance U.S. and uh, Coinbase. Because for Coinbase, I could do a, um, let's see here. Um, let's see, Tether. Oh, Tether, right there it is. If I wanted to um, receive some Tether, which we did earlier with the, uh, well, actually, we didn't receive Tether on Coinbase. We talked about it. I don't have to use the, um, oh, no, actually, uh, Tether is only supported on Coinbase in uh, ERC-20 format. But you're right. I, we could have maybe done a U.S. dollar coin instead. Um, if we wanted to receive U.S. dollar coin, uh, we could have received U.S. dollar coin on multiple networks. Right? Um, oh, Okay. I thought they used to... Oh, here, here, here. See, we could have switched to one of the cheaper chains for U.S. dollar coin. That is correct. So, uh, but my Tron... I had Tether in my um, Tangem wallet in Tron format. So I would have had to swap my Tether for U.S. dollar coin and then sent it, which I could have done. Uh, but I chose to swap it for Solana, which I know is a, a cheap and fast crypto. But yes, we could have done U.S. dollar coin, which has a, and it even there's even a Solana based uh, U.S. dollar coin, so which would have been cheap and fast as well. The one key works as a multi-sig device for some BTC wallets since it shows up like Trezor. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't realize that it worked in Trezor suite. It was kind of interesting. XLM is cheap. Yeah. Uh, Gregory Whelan, how's it going? Just checking in from Spain. 
Love the program. We'll keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Gregory. Uh, XLM and LTC, if I need to transfer between exchanges, Chaos Reigns knows how to do the uh, cheap transfer between exchanges when necessary. Uh, Tangem is one step closer to BitFi. Uh, if the cards fail, it's nice to have the seed phrase as an option. Yes, for sure. Um, slightly crypto, too late. I want to memorize my phrase. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Uh, it's not rocket science, you know. You can come up with, like, some mnemonics in your head. And uh, I think we talked last week about the difference between a 12-word and a 24-word seed phrase and how everybody thinks, oh, I should use 24. It's much, fa it's much faster. Or it's much more secure. Well, a 12-word is plenty secure. It would take, like, years and years. I, I don't know if I have that somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. Do, 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 do. Passphrase. Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, here it is. 12 or 24. There it is. Uh, so, um, we're talking about how long it would take to brute force crack a seed phrase, right? So a uh, one word seed phrase, you got a 0 0.05 chance of being correct. Uh, a brute forcing a 12 word secret phrase from a uh, 2048 word list. They're, they're, that's the, uh, the number of words that are in the list. Each guess has a one in 2048 to the 12th or a little chance of being correct. If you could make a trillion guesses per second on each of a trillion computers, it would take the lifetime of the universe so far to have a decent shot at it, right? So it's very difficult to crack, brute force crack a 12-word seed phrase. And of course, yeah, it would be double that for a 24-word, but do, are we really worried about you know, the lifetime of the universe when we're talking about the, our seed phrases? So 12-word is plenty secure, and it's easier to remember a 12-word seed phrase than a 24-word seed phrase. So um, keep that in mind, right? Uh, you could easily memorize your 12-word seed phrase, and then uh, no one can touch your crypto if you, you know, delete it all from all your wallets. And then you can recreate a wallet almost anywhere. Um, almost every hardware wallet is compatible with the 12-word seed phrase recovery and 24. Uh, Google Authenticator question if you have time. Have you had an issue with the codes not updating? I've reinstalled, deleted, and reauthorized two-factor. Any ideas? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by updating. Uh, so I think what you're saying is uh, uh, let's take a look at my phone here. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Let's get, uh, see if we can get this phone back up again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Google Auth. So you're saying that the codes aren't updating? Uh, I've never, ever, ever had that issue in my life. And I've been using Google Authenticator for years. I've never had a problem with these codes getting stuck, if that's what you're talking about. Um, the way that Google Authenticator works is when, it, uh, when you create a code, like say uh, on crypto.com, uh, when they ask you for your code, when you're trying to log in, just like a couple of times you saw it happen tonight, when th they use, there's like a key that both Google and Coinbase, let's use Coinbase as our example. They both share this crypto key, whatever it is. So it's like a synchronous uh, cryptographic handshake instead of asynchronous, right? They both have the same key stored somewhere. And then they, they run some transformation on it that uses the time of day in the, in the equation so that it's time synced. Right, so the code changes every 10 or 15 seconds. And that's why 
you see these codes expiring and replenishing every five to 10 seconds. That way, like if I generate a code and you see it on my computer, like in the live stream, you're gonna be, hey, I know Rex's code now. Well, no, you don't because it changes every 10 to 15 seconds. But I've never had a problem with Google Authenticator not the code not updating. If that's what you're talking about, I'm not sure if that's your what your issue is. Um, you can also um, export your codes um, and sync them to the cloud now. Hey, Red Rock Guy One, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I've never had a problem with these codes not updating. It's a very interesting issue. Tangem arrived open. Broken security sales and support says it's okay. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Yes, indeed. We've been talking about crypto. Um, current, we've been talking about cryptography tonight. Uh, when I was talking, I was just talking about uh, Google Authenticator having a cryptography code that's synchronous, but uh, the main uh, thing that is allowing crypto to exist is what's called public private key cryptography, if I can spell it, uh, or public key cryptography. So uh, I know it's complicated, but uh, when you create a Bitcoin wallet, the private key lives on the hardware device. The public key lives in the wallet or out there on the blockchain. So the public key is public. So only the person that has the private key can authorize an outgoing transaction. That's what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin, right? That's what makes it secure. If anybody could move Bitcoin around, then it wouldn't be much of a, a currency, right? If I have Bitcoin stored on the blockchain and Joe Blow can move my Bitcoin around, then that's not a very secure system, right? But the private key makes it secure in that only the person with the private key can authorize outgoing Bitcoin transactions. Well, this public-private key cryptography can also be applied to wallets. The wallet itself can have a, a private key. I'm not sure if it's private or a public key, but it's a crypto key that's stored on every single wallet they sell. Uh, Ledger has this feature, and uh, Tangem also has this feature. So there is a, a factory cryptography key stored on the device so that when you interact with the app, the app can communicate with the servers and double check to make sure that this is an authentic device. Uh, and it uses public private key cryptography. I'm not sure if this one has the public key and the server has the private key or exactly how the transaction works, but it is a secure verification process that can verify this wallet is not only genuine, but that it hasn't been tampered with. So there's really no reason to, uh, the security seals on the box are simply to keep the box closed. If you've ever opened up a ledger device, Ledger uses the same system. There, there, are, there is no uh, tamper-proof seal on a Ledger box. It's just covered in uh, shrink wrap, and you cut off the shrink wrap and open the box. There's no, uh, there's no like tamper-proof seal on a Ledger device. There might be like a little bit of tape or whatever, but they don't need them because of cryptography. I think a vein just popped out on my head. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard for people to wrap their head around this. I don't know what happened with their, their, the, the tangent seals. I don't know if they got into something with the Chinese government decided to open up all their boxes and make sure that, you know, they weren't shipping heroin. I don't know what happened, but something happened. 
The boxes got opened, apparently. Um, but the cards cannot be tampered with. I mean, what? how are you going to tamper with this? Uh, or you maybe you initialize it with your app. I don't know. But if, if that had happened, then your app, when you downloaded your app and connected your card to your app, it would say, oops, this card's already been activated. Or, oops, you know, this, is, this card is not genuine. Or, oops, this card has been tampered with. Right? That's what cryptography does. It secures your device using cryptography. So, yeah, it doesn't matter that the box has been opened. They even mention in one of their FAQs, you could buy a Tangem wallet in a, a freeway underpass from a homeless guy. It wouldn't matter. I mean, you could double check it right there to make sure he hasn't authorized because it, it would be useless if someone else had already authorized it. But if you get it and you, you activate it and it's working, then it's working. You don't have to worry if the box was open. I really don't know what happened with their box, though. It's really weird. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, John Lux sent me something. Uh, five bucks, and I appreciate it. Advice on finding a crypto-friendly bank for real money around the height of the bull run without hassles. Well, as I was lamenting earlier, most banks don't accept crypto. Um, but uh, if you want to connect your bank to a cryptocurrency exchange... Um, most banks are crypto friendly. Uh, I've been using Chase for many years. Cheryl, thank you for that. I appreciate the subscription. Most, uh, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, Chase works has been working very well with Coinbase and uh, Crypto.com and Kraken. So I've never had any problem with Chase Bank. Um, and here in Michigan, I also have a Lake Michigan Credit Union Bank, which is a small regional credit union bank here in Michigan. I think they're in some other states, too. Um, never had any problems with them, with my crypto exchanges. I'll have to admit that um, I haven't done huge transfers, uh, you know, like over 10,000 at any given day or time. But I have done fairly large withdrawals like you know around the five thousand dollar range and i've never had any problem with chase or lake michigan credit union or huntington bank i would assume wells fargo and um citibank are probably okay too i think now crypto is becoming more accepted i think in the early days there were the some of the banks kind of turned up their nose to crypto um but now with plaid uh you know, that, that's another uh, service that, uh, that is bank friendly, right? Now, if you go into, say, um, let's like, for instance, MetaMask. Like if we go into MetaMask and uh, we try to do their, uh, their like payout. Um, like, for example, uh, we want to buy some crypto and we try to use some of these third party payment processors. Most of these are like uh, European based, although I think MoonPay is in the U.S. You'll have your bank reject these sometimes. And they'll say, oh, uh, seems like it might be fraud or whatever. But generally, uh, you know, you'll get a text from your bank saying, we suspect fraud. W was this you? And if you say yes, then everything's fine. And you just try again. But these, these are, you know, kind of, you know, um, smaller type companies. But when you use Plaid to connect your bank account to Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini, you know, like a U.S. based exchange, um, the banks really are going to not going to have any problems with that. Right. I've heard tales of people saying that, you know, I withdrew a bunch of crypto and then the bank closed my account or some bizarre stuff. But that's been several years back. Uh, where are we now? We wanted to go over here. Uh, our Bitcoin came in. We hit our milestone, our 0.01 Bitcoin. Well, that's pretty good, 
right? So we just received that Bitcoin from one key. So uh, we moved, we bought the Bitcoin. Actually, that Bitcoin came from Binance US, right? So we bought the Bitcoin on Binance US using our Tether. We traded for Tether with Tether to buy our Bitcoin. And then we withdrew the Bitcoin to our one key. And then from the one key, we, we transferred it to our uh, ledger uh, device. And that was, so we moved that Bitcoin around a bit. Um, I'm trying to think where else could I move that Bitcoin? Um, don't have any more wallets laying around here. <laughs> uh, but let me catch up with the chat and then I would like to kind of give an overview about uh, what I was talking about with the best hardware wallets. Uh, Thin Blue has memorized 24 words. Good for you. Three stories, eight words each story. Very nice. Mnemonic device. Uh, I saw that I'm really curious if anyone would trust using even being open. The seals were literally torn. Not sure how a company that boasts about security can be so lax about a breach. Yeah, I, I get the feeling it was a customs issue, but I don't know. Uh, it seems weird, and I have a box, too, that came open. The first box from Tangium that I bought was sealed. I had to tear it. But the second box, it, the seal was not torn off the box, but the, the perforation was separated. So it looked like it was carefully opened and maybe inspected. I don't think that was their fault, but I don't know the whole story. Uh, let's see. Here we are. I'm using Binance Global and moved USA. I don't know which exchange I can use. If you were using Binance before, I think in the U.S., your best bet is Coinbase or Gemini or Kraken. Those are very top tier exchanges which will allow fiat withdraw withdrawals and deposits and have support lots of coins for trading right so um i was showing you coinbase uh you know this is kraken so kraken is great uh gemini um gemini is a good exchange I think if you live in New York, Gemini is, I, I'm not sure about New York now, but I think you could probably use Coinbase in New York style. So yeah, use a top tier exchange. Also crypto.com, pretty decent uh, crypto exchange. I'm not sure if they're, um, they're, um, authorized in every single U.S. state yet or not. I think there may be one or two states that don't allow Crypto.com. Uh, but Crypto.com is a great uh, U.S. based. Well, they're based in Hong Kong and they have like a full-blown uh, desktop based exchange, but it's not available in the U.S. But their app is available in the U.S. in most states. So if you're looking for if you're looking for another exchange, uh, since you can't use Binance anymore, I would suggest Coinbase number one. Uh, it's the top currency exchange in the U.S. Crypto exchange. Um, Twelve words is enough, but twenty four gives me peace of mind. Okay, I get that. Uh, Tangem two point Consider moving Binance tokens to self-custody wallet when you're ready for a U.S. exchange. Move the U.S. exchange when you need to make a transaction. Yeah. I'm a little behind, guys. Uh, and to appreciate the Google Authenticator responses. It's apparently a problem since the last app update. True, you can reopen the app every time to get new codes. Okay. Huh. Interesting issue. Um, and I, my phone is on auto update, so I didn't notice any problems, but things get updated <laughs> all the time. And sometimes there's glitches. My Tangis card came in. The package has been tampered with, not sealed at all, all broken. I don't trust it. Although those two phrases that's supposed to be when you set up, were not there. Um, you don't, the, well, the, when you set up a tangent card is when they generate the phrase. There shouldn't be a phrase on there already. I, I hope that everyone heard me explaining why it's not a problem for the box to be open cryptographically. The wallet is still 
valid. If if it, I mean, if it's been tampered with, the app would tell you right away. So if you can set up the the wallet, then you don't have anything to worry about. Um, I'm sure a lot of people sent theirs back. Uh, hopefully, that whatever this issue with the seal is will be uh, resolved. Uh, my bank refuses to transfer my small amount seven times. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure um, what bank you're using and why and what exactly you're trying to do. Um, but like I said, if you just use uh, a top tier crypto exchange and connect your bank through Plaid, you shouldn't have those kind of issues, right? You can always send that BTC to my wallet. Yes, I could. <laughs> Debating between XLM and Kit Barra bars, leaning towards the Kit Kats. Uh, two for five is a good entry point. I love Kit Kat chocolate. I hope you're talking about chocolate. <laughs> uh, Coinbase is a publicly traded company, and they don't have their own token. I only trust them. Ah, it's good. Uh, let's see. Looking forward to the cold car with QR code capabilities and keyboard. Okay, so let's go over all of the wallets that we were talking about tonight. Uh, Ledger is the top wallet, supports a lot of coins, has a lot of industry support, uh, has a very good secure device, has uh, several price points that you can um, get in at, uh, but they have problems with public trust over their recover service. Um, I still use my Ledger Nano X. It's a great hardware wallet. Uh, the Ledger Nano Plus is also a great wallet with about the same amount of storage. It just doesn't have the Bluetooth capability, um, but pretty much the same wallet. So Ledger is a great choice. But uh, with the public trust issue, a lot of people are turning towards Trezor. Uh, I did uh, some Trezor demos tonight. We talked about Trezor, a great wallet. Hopefully, I'll get my Trezor Safe 3 soon. I've uh, been begging them to send me one. Uh, but the Trezor Model T is my go-to Trezor device. Great touchscreen, easy to use, a little bit pricey, but completely open source and trustworthy. The only drawback to Trezor is that it doesn't support all of the same, uh, all of the multiple cryptos that the Ledger devices support. Now we can move over to OneKey. I showed you my OneKey Classic. There's also the uh, OneKey Touch, which is a great touch screen, a little more expensive, uh, you know, 249 bucks, but a decent wallet, very nice and easy to use. And um, they have several price options, right? So you can get the Classic, which is, you know, around 89 bucks, which is one I was using tonight. And the one key is open source, uh, and it supports lots of different cryptos. I didn't really go into all of the different cryptos you could uh, manage with one key, but it's a great hardware wallet. Maybe not as well known as Ledger and Trezor, but uh, needless to say, a great wallet. They sent me some of their products, and I've tested them out, and I really like them. Uh, and then I've also been doing uh, some Tangem demos tonight. I didn't get a chance to do the Keystone, but I did want to show you the, the Keystone 3 that uh, the, the good people at Keystone sent me. Uh, I want to go full screen on this. So this is my Keystone 3. Uh, they uh, gave me uh, a, sp a special Crypto Dad backplate, which I think is really cool of them. I really like this. And uh, this is an air-gapped wallet. Highly secure, very secure. Whoops, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, worth looking into, definitely. Uh, let's see, price-wise. Not that expensive. Uh, so uh, less than a Trezor uh, Model T and less than a Ledger Nano X, you can get a great hardware wallet um, they support a lot of different cryptos as well. Now, they're trying to be uh, decentralized. Uh, they've, they've kind of abandoned their Keystone uh, companion app and sort of uh, their, the preferred wallet now is um, OKX, which is a very uh, versatile 
uh, cryptocurrency wallet that you can use on desktop or mobile and is compatible with the Keystone wallet. So uh, I give Keystone high marks. A little harder to use than most crypto wallets. Um, you need to be kind of savvy when you're using an air-gapped wallet. But once you get the hang of it, not that difficult. Uh, these wallets don't connect to your computer. They generate QR codes uh, for the authorization and the, uh, the, the request and the authorization are generated via QR code, and you're scanning them with the devices, which is a pretty cool, safe, and secure way of authorizing transactions. Once again, no private keys are being uh, scanned. Uh, you're only scanning uh, authorized transactions. Um, and Descent is also a good wallet. I didn't get a chance to uh, talk about Descent tonight, but uh, those are pretty affordable. They've got the biometric wallet, which is pretty cool. I think I got one here. I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> uh, where'd it go? Well, I don't know. I lost it. Wherever it is. It's a, it's a nice little wallet. can't believe I... I, I th oh, here it is. <laughs> it was under my teacup. No, that's my treasure. I don't know. I misplaced it. It's around here somewhere. Um, and then uh, they got a two-pack. So it you can authorize it with a fingerprint or a thumbprint, but you can it it can default back to your key, uh, pin key. Uh, people ask me like the uh, but these hardware wallets that have biometrics, they go, what if you what if your finger gets cut off? <laughs> you lose your crypto? No. <laughs> but yeah, it makes it much easier and it's uh, makes it more secure, right? And so it's convenient and secure. So uh, if I want to send a transaction, I can use my fingerprint, easy peasy. But if I lose the device and someone else finds it, they're, they're out of luck, right? They don't have my fingerprint and they don't have my, my pin, right? And then uh, someone brought up the cold card. Uh, where's my cold card? Here. Oops. Cold card wallet. Great, secure, open source wallet. Bitcoin only, which is fine. Um, Bitcoin only and uh, very security oriented, um, air gapped, all that good stuff. Uh, I guess it's air gap. Figure how I forget how it works. It's very secure. Uh, a little tricky to to learn how to use. Uh, like I said, I can't even remember how it works. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure it's kind of like an air gap thing. There's no... Uh, well, I think you can connect it. Yeah, I, I remember. There's several ways to use the cold card. Um, you can connect it or you can use a, a SD card for the air gap solution. So uh, very uh, secure and, let's see, a little pricey. But if security is number one for you and you, uh, you know, you're not a casual person, you're a very... Uh, intense person that f can knows how to focus, this is a great card, right? But if you're kind of like, oh, I just want to buy some crypto and put it somewhere, then you're probably better off with a more mainstream type wallet that, you know, it's easier to use. But this is penultimate security, right? Um, and they're on sale now. I think they're normally around 200. So, yeah, and they're kind of cool, right? Uh, so what's the best hardware wallet? Um, it just depends on your needs and your budget and your, uh, technical expertise, right? If you're, uh, you know, tech oriented, then you might want to go with, uh, a cold card for your Bitcoin and maybe a ledger, um, or a treasure, right? But uh, if you want something really easy to use, Tangem's real great for ease of use. Uh, one key is really cool for ease of use, especially uh, for their uh, one key touch. Which is a little, but you know you have to think about your budget too, right? So Ledger has uh, several options, price-wise as well as Trezor, right? You can get the T 
or the uh, one or the three, right? So which wallet you buy from which company um, depends on your needs. Now, uh, I trust Ledger. The way that they, uh, th they base their wallet on secrecy, um, no one knows how it works, and that's just fine with me. Uh, it should be a secret. But other people think, well, Trezor is open source, so I'd rather have an open source that can be checked. But uh, the, the one drawback to open source is that everyone has access to the code, and even the bad guys can try to you know, uh, exploit the code, which they have done in the past, but it's been fixed, right? And so you have to remember there are trade-offs to every strategy. So open source is great, but it does mean that, uh, that people can find exploits and exploit them. Uh, but usually these exploits involve, well, I'd say 100% of the time, these exploits involve someone having physical possession of the device. So keep the device hidden in your home, somewhere safe. You don't have to worry. No one has remotely hacked a Trezor or a Ledger, right? One Keys, pretty much the same. I haven't heard, you know, anybody saying, oh, the One Key's been hacked, right? And One Key is open source, too. Uh, and so is Tangem. Tangem's open source, um, right? There's really no firmware in there. Or, I mean, I guess there's some firmware in there. Keystone, oh, open source as well. A lot of great wallets to choose from, but uh, my advice to you is if you've got some Bitcoin, and it's a lot, you know, if you've put your hard-earned money into, you know, uh, over $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, it shouldn't just be sitting on an exchange. Coinbase is great. I trust them, but I'm not going to trust my Bitcoin to Coinbase um, I'd rather have it in my own wallet. And yes, it's going to cost you a little bit of money to learn how to move when you move Bitcoin because there are tra there are transfer fees. But better safe than sorry, right? We all learned that with the FTX collapse. A lot of people trusted the FTX exchange and Sam Bankman-Fried, and they lost. Uh, let's see. Ledger issue lost uh, public trust. Managing third parties for the new wallet that still got them here, and then the loss of user info three years ago. Yes, they also uh, had a data leak of user info. Uh, top drawer of my freezer, very safe. <laughs> Cold storage, yeah. You know, I like I I store my uh, Twix and my uh, Kit Kats in my fridge. Uh, freezer. Uh, a little too hard when it comes out, but I like them nice and cold. So I like the way you think, Mark. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. I do this every Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me again for the live stream from Michigan where you can throw out your questions, and I'll do my best to get them answered. Thank you, JDO for being the moderator tonight. Thank you, Dan, for being the moderator. Um, I couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, you're in there in the trenches fielding the questions as they come hard and fast, and I really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you, Kenny, for all the news stories and all the encouragement. I appreciate you and what you do. Kenny is always here um, every stream like clockwork, and it's great to have you here. Thank you, everyone that donated. Um, let's see. And I had a lot of subscribers tonight. Jo John Lux, thanks for the donation. Asil, thanks for your donation. As usual, John Lux. Actually, it looked like he donated twice, maybe. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the subscriptions that came in tonight. Uh, if you like this particular video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.